The views and opinions expressed in this presentation are not necessarily those of the California Department of Toxic Substances Control. Um, the site was, had, was not accepting waste anymore, but they had several ponds operating. They were trying to get rid of the liquid. <laughs> So there was a lot of resentment from the community when things would drag on and on and on. We may not have known what trichloroethylene was, but we knew what lead was, we knew what arsenic was, we knew what chromium was, we knew there, what DDT was. These are things that, that shouldn't be out in the community. And so that's, uh, you know, we, on that basis, and I have to say it was the women who said, okay, that's enough. We've got to do something here. Penny is very good at what she does. And that is not always something that people who are working on the other side of the fence in the regulatory community appreciate. And at first it was local with the county. We were treated very much like hysterical housewives. I remember, you know, hearing and being called that the first time. So a lot of our early years was um, the battle over getting a seat at the table. I have a lot of respect for what she did over the years. Uh, she scared us a lot, too. Finding out where the agencies were meeting and, and crashing the meeting. And, uh, you know, they'd adjourn immediately. <laughs> it was really fun to go into a meeting and sit down, especially if you pulled out a tape recorder. I attended a very controversial public meeting that was held at a high school in Glen Avon. After the radiation was found at the site and uh, there was already a scheduled community meeting and I kept telling them you know you've got to address this radiation issue you know people don't know what to do they're not drinking the water because they're scared to death. It was a real lesson in public participation. They said, oh yeah, we're gonna, the first 15 minutes of the meeting, we're gonna address the radiation. Then we're gonna go on with an update on the site. And I said, you're crazy. You know, they're not gonna let you do that. They don't care about the other right now. They care about their family's health, the radiation for God's sake, you know? And sure enough, they started out with the radiation thing and people had a lot of comments. The only response we kept getting was, uh, you know, we appreciate your concern. And they brought nobody down to address radiation at all, to explain the different types of radiation, what to look for, anything else, or if they have new readings that could reassure, nothing. She had children, everybody there in the community. They got up, they said what they had to say, and when they were through, one of the cowboys in the community was picking up a folding chair, and he was going to throw it. And I stepped in with him and talked to him, got him out the door. But somebody saw him folding up this chair and, and thought it was a good idea. They just started folding up the chairs and putting them away, so the meeting was over. They put the folding chairs away, and it was virtually impossible for that meeting to continue. Uh, it was pretty, I, I don't think the staff ever knew what prompted that. The Environmental Protection Agency listed the most hazardous dumps in America. California had 11, including one in a Riverside Canyon called Stringfellow. So by the time 83 came around, finally the Stringfellow site was on the NPL, the new Superfund list. With that, EPA came in and took over operation uh, of the oversight of the site. Uh, with Department of Health Services, Toxics Division, uh, working jointly with EPA. One of my first assignments when I came to the job was to accept the keys to the Stringfellow site from the Regional Water Quality Control Board. Some of the legal tools came along, um, and so this whole idea of joint and several liability became the basis for you know, I would say in engaging with the potentially responsible parties. We had sued the responsible parties, those companies that had uh, dumped at Stringfellow. Superfund uh, is a fund, but the, the fund expects to get repaid, and first thing it does, it goes after the industrial responsible parties to get money to pay for the site. We would rent 
uh, facilities like uh, the LA Convention Center and invite in hundreds of responsible parties to tell them that we had information that they disposed of waste at Stringfellow and that they needed to come up with a team and a plan. And Their response was that Stringfellow was a permitted site. Indeed, permitted by the Regional Water Quality Control Board. Because obviously they, they believed that it was geologically sound and it would contain the waste. It, it turns out that it was not geologically sound and it resulted in leakage from the site and groundwater contamination extending all the way down the valley. So to make a uh, sort of a long story short, the defense from industry was it's a permitted site. They decided to counter sue and say, oh, by the way, uh, we actually think the state of California is fully liable for the site. Um, and they won. The state lost every case that was ever lodged against it. So we were held 100% responsible for everything that had happened at that site. There were tens of millions of dollars that were paid out to the citizens for harm to them and their property. Almost $100 million in federal costs. Tens of millions of dollars to what we called the responsible parties and uh, they gave us just really a, a, a few months to uh, assume the contract for operation of the site, which was about $5 million a year.